hello and welcome to this video in this video i want to show you uh, two methods by which you can calculate depreciation this time straight line uh, depreciation you can also apply it in reducing balance depreciation so what makes it different is that uh, option one uses a lot of rows and if you need additional years you need to use more rows um, for example, if you're modeling for 60 periods, uh, this could mean uh, using much more than just this number of rows to compute for depreciation. But the second option does not need you to add more rows as the years increases. So um, that is this other option. I'm going to show you um, how to use the uh, tick function to calculate this. It makes it easy and straightforward. Those of you who may be using the offset function, um, in this video, I'm trying to prove to you that the take function is way, way better than the op offset function in calculating uh, this method. So um, if you are interested to know how to calculate depreciation or you're used to option one and you would like to see how I do option two, please just stick around and uh, let me show you how. So what we're going to do is to set, set up the depreciation schedule for the first method. And what we're going to do is going to have the years. We're going to have the years here. We're going to have our um, capex. Uh, we're going to have our uh, capex spend here. And uh, let me just make these ones to be our capex spend here and we are going to have our useful uh, life here we're going to have our useful life so for the years we're just going to assume that we're starting from the year 2024 and because i'm hard coding that i'm going to just uh, going to just use the blue color uh, there and um what we're going to do is we're just going to add one to it to take it up to the number of years that we want so how many years here so we have six years here let's make it seven years of course you can grow it you can actually shift it to the number of years that you want so for capex pen we're going to use the rand between function to generate something so i'm going to just assume 250 uh to um uh, 450 uh so we use small numbers so that we'll be able to just uh see what is happening and so that it is here so if i should leave it like that every time i update any other cell they will be changing so what i'm going to do is going to just come here and copy it um, and uh, what we just do is we paste them as values okay so this way uh, they stay the same they don't change irrespective of updates of other cells so now we've got uh, our hypothetical uh, capex pen and we've got our you know years here and maybe we just underline them like this uh, to stay there so what about the useful life we're going to assume a useful life of uh, four and here is it so we just assume a useful life of four so um here this is actually going to be money it's going to be money sorry it's going to be um money So uh, that's sure you know what it is. So because this is going to be our uh, units, I'm going to just, you know, uh, reduce it a little bit and put it like that so that we know what it is. So this is just uh, years. Um, this is just years for us. And this is, uh, this is just number. It's just number. So this is our useful life and uh, it could also be number of years, num years. Um, let's leave that one like that. So there it is. And so from this, we are supposed to calculate uh, the, uh, the. And so from this, we are supposed to build 
the depreciation schedule. So to build the depreciation schedule, I would need to, you know, as if it were, inverse these numbers, bring them to colon. They are in a row now, we'll bring them to colon. And fortunately, Excel has this to call um, function. And the to call function just requires me to take this uh, numbers, this array of numbers, and um, that's just all. All the others are exceptional, and actually, I don't need it. So, once I click here, you would see that I will get the numbers here. Okay. Now, the next thing I will want to do. The next thing I want to do is to uh, get these values here too. So it's the same thing. I'm just going to do uh, the toco. And I'm going to pick the area of capex spend. And then here they are. So the next thing I need to do is to find out. So I'm going to move this. Uh, let me move this here. Okay. So, um, and possibly create this one here. So we have yes here, and we have uh, the capex uh, spin, projected capex spin here. So these are they. I'm just going to uh, do some formatting to just keep them the way they should be. And let's make this this and everything here bold so we make that that way so what we actually want to do is that we want to get the annual depreciation so this is more like the annual deep depreciation that we want to get in here to get this um what we just need to do is to take each of these values split them and then divide it by four I'm going to lock that for because I want to, f I, I mean, everything here would be divided by four. And so I want to get how much I am amortizing or depreciating each year. So that is what we get here, what we depreciate each year. Okay. So once we've got this, we are ready to build um, our depreciation schedule. So what we will be doing, we'll be finding the minimum between this value and so we'll be locking it to the column there's a dollar sign behind the column id and this other value we would also be locking this to the column because we want it to be constantly referenced when we uh, copy to the right hand side but we're going to subtract the sum of a cumulative value of all that we have been depreciating in the previous years. So for the first year, you can see that I'm linking to um, a cell just before the first year. It's important for you to have this empty uh, column here so that you can use it to start. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to get a cumulative sum here. So what we mean by a cumulative sum is that we want it to I'm going to this this sum and this value here will be summing everything I've depreciated after uh, before a current year. So you'll see what I'm talking about now. So actually, uh, this sums it up, and so we'll put it here. So you see the minimum between this annual depreciation and this is going to be this. So we're going to copy it down. We're going to copy it down here. And then what do you notice? You would notice that um, you would notice that the it depreciates for four years. That's what we want it to do. Um, if it's if it were going to be for um, another three years. So if I change this to three, this is what it happens. So it depreciates it to three years. So irrespective of what you want to put in there, it does this. And the reason why it does this is because it's finding the minimum between this value and this minus whatever it had depreciated in the previous years. So let's continue with our four years as it is. And then um, what we can do here is we just copy it down. So there it is. We've got uh, these uh, numbers for four years. But one thing you will notice is that all of them are starting in year one. And it's not supposed to be so. It should start from whichever year that they are supposed to have been 
are acquired. So that is what we need to do to perfect this. And to do that, um, I will just come here and then do this. So what we are going to do here is we're going to find out if this value here, and I'm going to lock it to the row. I'm going to find out if the value up there is 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 greater or equal to um, this value here. And I'm going to lock it to the column also there. I'm going to lock it to the column because I want to copy down. I want it to come down the changing way, but for the column, I want it to stick to that column. So having done this, I'm going to do this and copy it here and then check what it does. So um, let's copy it down. I will want you to see what it does when I do copy it down. So what this means is that in the second year, you ought not to give me anything at all because whatever I'm buying is in the second year. So if in the second year, it starts from the second column here. By the third year, it should start from the third column and just like that. So it builds in that way. But the thing is that um, this is not exactly what I want to use, but the, we, we, we could actually use it. Now in, in uh, Excel, true is one and then um, um, false is zero. So what I just need to do is to take this formula that I've written here. I'm going to copy it come into this cell so you see there is the formula here so what we just need to do is multiply with this formula that I have here so I'm going to hit my enter button I'm going to copy it down so you see it takes it out from there and here it is so it's does depreciation so we really do not need this I actually did this so that you can understand what is happening you can always go back to the video and understand what is happening okay so but here you can see that I have succeeded I have succeeded in creating this depreciation schedule here and um, just like this so I succeeded in creating it here so the first one goes ends up here and then the next one goes and just four years so the last one 20 to 30 has just done uh, one year so it's expected to do further and the way this thing is created is such that you can actually pull it or drag it to go um, further okay so this i consider to be the long um, uh, approach to calculating depreciation because if i want to add in more years what i really need to do is to you know I have to create uh, more um, columns, which is okay, but I also have to create more rows if I want to add more years to it. So let's call this, um, let's call this uh, option, um, let's call this option one, let's call this option one, and um, I'm just going to so option one, um, let's see what we have here. Um, I'm going to use this, let's get a color. I'm going to use this two in something here. So that tells us that this is, um, this is option one. So what we're going to do is to get the option two and to see how that is calculated. And call this option two. For option two, we definitely would need everything we have here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm not going to enter them again. So we have this one here. So once we have this in place, what we really will do is to find out what are the periods. So when I say period, I mean this. I actually mean um this being period one, or uh, if you want to use a formula, we can just do a count of this, and it's going to be a cumulative count. So for a cumulative count, I need a dollar sign behind here. So what happens is that it gives me a cumulative count like this. 
So I need another uh, role, and what this role is going to do is going to give me uh, the depreciation uh, um, useful life. Okay, uh, use useful um, life. So, but the thing there about this useful life is that here we see our useful life is four. So everything less than four is tenable but greater than four it's not tenable so what we just need to do here is to tell ourselves that we can use an if function and say that if this value here is less than or equal to the useful life here and so we're going to lock this one here what we want is you're going to give us the same value up here else you're going to give us the useful life so i'm going to lock it here so you would see what this creates for us well here here is it so you see that for the first year okay second year third year but 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 the fourth year everything becomes for going forward now this is very important for the calculation or the option 2 method for calculating depreciation. So the next thing we are going to do here is that we are going to use a function called uh, the take function. So what does the take function actually do? It's a new function in Excel and what it does, um, like you can see here, it says return rows or columns from array start or end so it can return from the start it can return from the end so i'm going to use the take function now and i'm going to show you what it does so we're going to take um these values i just want to show you what it does so we take these values and say uh give me one row and this is what it does you see so it's giving us one row here. Now, if I don't want to use the rows and I say, give me one column, see, it gives me just the first because each of these are columns. So it gives me just the first, just the first number, you know, as if it were a column. You get a column like this. So it's giving me the first number. So what if I had said, give me three numbers? So you can see it gives us three numbers in this form you see so it can give us that and continuously now the interesting thing is that if i do minus one you see it's giving me the last number here so it can pick numbers it can take numbers from starting or at the end of an array which is a beautiful thing and the interesting thing is that in this our uh, concentration we want it to take from the end and not from the start so once you use um uh, positive numbers it's going to take numbers from the start of the array but when you use negative numbers it's going to take it from the back so most of you who are used to python uh, programming would understand this those who use maybe pandas for data analysis you will know that well this is one thing that is also common there so happily we have it in excel and the take function is offering us that so we're going to use the take function here and what we actually will be doing is we are not going to now let me start it from the beginning i'm going to say take here take and i'm going to reference this and i'm going to do it as if i'm doing a cumulative reference here you get it so it's going to start from the it will always start its selection from the first number and it will grow as you copy it to the right hand side we're not going to use the row function but what we are going to do is that we are going to use a negative number that picks from uh, uh, picks values and it's going to be picking this value as we go along now if i should um you know hit this you see i'm going to get this value here and if i should copy it down i'm going to get some spill errors now that's normal because uh, with this as an array function, it needs other cells to fill in things that you want to that you want the formula to do, just like we used it here. So this is an array formula. So it takes it and it needs to fill it 
he needs empty cells to fill it but right now he doesn't see enough cells to fill in what he wants to fill in here so that's not what we really want to do what we really want to do is to wrap it around with a sum function so i'm going to wrap it around with the sum function now and i'm going to just do this and so you see the spill arrow it's no longer there so what we are doing here so like you can see what is happening here is that i am summing these values you know so if i you see this is the first one if i should have this two here so that comes to this value here if i should have this three here that comes to the sum of this value so if you add up all of this you get this 805 that you have here so that is what it's actually doing now what i need to do i haven't got this because this is going to be our depreciation this is going to be our depreciation all i need to do is to you know take this formula that is here and divide it by this four the useful life and i'm going to just lock it i'm going to lock it there and then we just copy it here so what have i done here um what i have done here um, um let me just uh, uh, use this here so you can see and i want to just sum what we have here so you can compare Yeah, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to copy this here, and that's it for us uh, here. Okay, so you can see now that what I have here is sorry, it's the same thing as what I have here. So you can see true. For all of them so it tests the citron now what is the difference between option one and option two um option one tends to take much resources in terms of cell space and if i'm adding more years i am going to have more rows added to it it's going to occupy a lot of space but option two tends to occupy less than the space that we have here so um just to uh, this is not like a count and uh, the useful life is also a count and then depreciation is uh, money that's money related okay so so this takes less so all i need to do is just add more years here and add more values and just copy each of these down just copy each of these down and i'm going to get it for example um let's assume that we're going uh one more year so i'm going to go one more year like this and uh, in fact what you can do is not just break it down like that since they are all formulas you could just move it it's going to have a false here anyway but the thing that it's having the false is because i don't have an additional one here 23. so this can it easily be extended for you to see what other years would be given different uh values you know and just like that it would help you see so that's what this video is all about to show you um uh, w these two options for calculating depreciation and how to model it in excel so it's left for you to choose which one you would like using i i tend to like this because sometimes when you model uh for all the um, when you model for other things for example uh, if you want to model the interest that comes from uh, people borrowing money, the paid money in maybe a certain period of time, maybe six months and after six months, that money is plowed back maybe to other borrowings. and you, So it could take a long, long time. Or for example, you might want to build your model, not annually now, but monthly and monthly for five years that's about 60 uh, 60 rows so you need 60 rows to calculate depreciation for each of the months well you can actually use this method to do your calculation and it's not going to take that much space it will take this same space only uh, more columns just like you have it in your 60 periods in whatever models that you 
you're doing. So I believe you learned something from this video and I hope to see you in yet another video. Thank you.